Hello, everybody. Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave. Welcome to the program today. We're glad you're here. We come to you on Tuesdays at noon so we can be seen across the country. Uh, so it works for everyone. But we come and we want to answer your questions about MagnaWave, PEMF, training, machines, uh, whatever it may be that you want to talk about, regulations. Uh, a couple of questions today about regulations that we will discuss. If you uh, would, would be so kind, uh, please share this with your friends so they can have an opportunity to listen or watch as well. And um, that, that's always a lot of fun. We're also coming to you today on CastBox. So if you want to have the link to listen like you're on the radio, uh, like you would do if you're driving or working in, in the barn or something or working somewhere that you don't want to have the ability to watch it, you can listen to it on CastBox. We're also broadcasting on YouTube and LinkedIn and of course Facebook Live. So again, it's great to be here. A couple of announcements. Today is the last day to uh, join the uh, opportunity to win a soul uh, for a hundred dollars you have an opportunity to win a soul machine 100 percent of the proceeds will be given to charity uh elaine's been working and chris has been working on various charities and uh, where the where the funds are going to go for that so today is the last day to uh for a hundred dollars um, you can see that on the Facebook page. You can go there and there is a banner, a place to click uh, or a way to do it in order to make your donation uh, for charity and to have the opportunity to win a soul machine. So we're pretty excited about that. Some other things that are happening tomorrow, uh, we're doing a demonstration for Louisville City Racing, which is the women's professional uh, major league soccer team that will debut next year in Louisville. Uh, in, in the women's uh, MLS and we're excited about that and they're very excited about working with us so we'll be with the coach and the training staff tomorrow uh, at our offices doing a demonstration on all the various equipment that's available to them and to bring them up to speed so it's always exciting to work with sports uh, professionals and as we develop the athletic side um, of the business. Also, uh, if you would like to talk with me, simply send a text to 502-599-9722 and I will call you back and we can have a conversation. Uh, today, I'll be giving a copy of Pillars of Success, uh, the book that I wrote with Jack Canfield. Uh, my picture is right there on the back of the book there somewhere. I don't know where it is for me. I haven't looked. Oh, there it is right up in the third one. I'm in the third chapter of the book and the Pillars of Success. So if you give me a call today, we'll send you a signed copy of Pillars of Success, 502-599-9722. Uh, the book is doing very well, and we're excited about that. It uh, To be able to write a book with Jack Canfield and the other professionals that are in the book is really uh, exciting and uh, a neat thing to have been able to do. So if you'd like to talk with me, have a question for me, 502-599-9722, and I will uh, certainly get right back to you. Uh, and answer your questions at that time. Let's see if we have anything in the comments section at this point that may, uh, hey, good morning, Jason. Uh, good morning, Idle Hour, Northern Lights. Maureen's with us this morning and Ashley is with us. So thank you for being with us and uh, posting in the box. If you're new to the program, say hello in the chat box and we can find out who you are and where you are and uh, welcome you to the uh, MagnaWave family. So a couple of questions. I did receive a question last week that came in through the certified group about uh, state regulations for treating racehorses. This particular person was asking about treating standard bred horses and what about various rules and regulations by state. Well, typically the racing jurisdictions are governed and the rules come from the jurisdiction or the racing group in Kentucky or Delaware, or wherever it happens to be, and they have specific regulations uh, to to their um, regulation in their various states. Now, today, I uh, read earlier that Mitch McConnell of Kentucky is supporting a bill or putting a bill before Congress where they have nationwide regulations with regard to doping and uh, situations like that in the horse racing industry. It's been a lot of problems with, with people doping and they're trying to make sure that the, the tracks are clean, the horses are clean and everybody is uh, on a fair level playing field. So there is some drive to get the regulations in the thoroughbred industry, at, at least starting there, maybe going to the other industries as well. 
uh, on on the same basis. So if you can't use this drug in California, you can't use it in Kentucky. That that type of thing, and that's where they're going with that. So that's coming forward. But currently, in most jurisdictions, it's up to the state vet, the state, the regulations for that particular state or racing jurisdiction. Now, there was also a question last week. The South Carolina uh, Veterinarian uh, Association has put um, PEMF in the regulations as being performed by a veterinarian. And a lot of folks have commented that they're worried that's, a, that's going to basically put them out of business or make it difficult for them to do business in those situations. Of course, we want to, the AOPP is going to reach out to the folks in, in South Carolina and try to have a conversation about that to see what is included, what's not included, who they will work with, so on and so forth. Uh, but that has happened. It's happened in other states as well, uh, one being Arizona, to where it, it's in, not only is it and in the practice of a veterinary, they watch it very closely. And what practitioners do there is they rent their equipment to the end user. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing illegal with that uh, at all. Uh, anyone can rent whatever they'd like to rent from someone. So practitioners will rent the equipment to the various horse owners or the barns or whatever the situation may be. And then in some cases, they volunteer their services to show, demonstrate, provide the services at that point uh, as, as, a, as a free part of the, of the rental program or to train them and how to use the devices. And that works very well. And it has worked well for a number of years for the practitioners that find themselves in those types of situations. Now, a lot of times these rules are there uh, and some states uh, don't necessarily enforce them, but they have them there. So if they come across someone and they feel that they're practicing veterinary medicine, that they have a background to say, look, you're doing this wrong. You can't be doing this. So it's always best to have a look at that and understand where it's coming from and the rules that you need to uh, to operate under. Uh, we had a similar situation in Oklahoma several years ago to where they were having huge fights between the farriers who were doing dentistry and dentists who uh, equine dentists performing uh, uh, services and the, the veterinarians, I don't know if it was the veterinarians, but the vet board didn't like it. So there was a lot of consternation. We got pulled into it simply by virtue of being there. Any other therapy was pulled into it as well as to what could be administered uh, in Oklahoma. And you had to have an Oklahoma license and all of that. But uh, over time, same type of situation. I was in a barn, uh, the, what I called the vet police came in and told us that we couldn't touch that horse. We could not provide the services. So we simply taught and showed the, um, the groom or the, the assistant trainer how to use the device and let them use the devices uh, on the horse with our expertise as to where to do it, how to do it, when to move it, so on. And, and those are ways that a lot of people do deal with and, and get around these particular situations. And it's not that we're trying to skirt the law, it's just that we want to operate very, very well within the guidelines that people uh, put forward. Someone made the comment in one of the streams that uh, they talked to the veterinarians and the veterinarians didn't know about PEMF and uh, so they didn't offer it and they weren't going to and so on and so forth but with the proper education and that's those are the tools that we have available for you there's certainly in those instances there are a lot of veterinarians small animal veterinarians large animal veterinarians that you know, once they learn and see how this could be beneficial to their practice then they can add these services and you can provide the services for them uh, as long as they over underwrite you and tell you what you're what you're doing and that's another way that uh, other people have dealt with this situation is they simply uh, have a vet sign for them, endorse them as a provider, and then whatever mutual relationship they have with the veterinarian as to how things are handled is, is up to them and the veterinarian. And, uh, and that has worked out very well also. So it's just something that, <clears throat> unfortunately, that we have to deal with. But as I said, over the years, in many instances, these particular rules have not been enforced. Doesn't mean they're not there and, and uh, it does limit what you can do. So if you have a question about that, you'd like to discuss it, give me a, give me a call 502-599-9722 and I'd be happy to have a discussion with you. Let's see here. Um, um, good morning, Ashley. Magna Wave Corp. Wait, 
see, yes, enter by 5 p.m. today is the uh, last, is when the contest for the free soul ends. And uh, Marine Boyle says, Chicago loves Magna Way. That's good. Uh, Dion, thank you for being with us. Um, uh, Kayla asks a question, just bought a Julian last week and just got certified. I can't wait to start and to can't wait for it to get shipped and delivered. There you go, Kayla, welcome, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you and uh, look forward to working with you as well. Uh, Suzanne's with us from Minneapolis. Thank you for being with us. Let's see, no questions yet. Uh, doggone it, if you have a question, put it in the chat box and we'd be happy to uh, answer those questions for you. Um, it's always interesting to do that. If we don't get a lot of questions, then I won't hang around <laughs> for a long time today, but uh, I wanna be with you and I wanna answer any questions uh, that you may have. Also, I'll tell you about my other book that just was released uh, recently at the same time as Pillars of, of Success, and it's Miracles, Wake Up Miracles, and a very interesting book, a lot of great authors in the book. I'm gonna start an interview series with each one of these authors and uh, to cover their stories and to hear what they're saying. And it's a great way for you to learn what a lot of folks are doing with integrative medicine and how we have used what we consider uh, a miracle and how the machine has been, has, how the machine has been used. A lot of people, I don't like to talk about miracles. I believe in miracles and I, I try to make miracles happen with when we do things and, and uh, utilize the equipment. But these, these authors in this book talk about their integrative practices and what they've done to to for their clients and to get what many people consider to be miraculous results. So it's Wake Up Miracles, available on Amazon, also a number one bestseller and uh, doing very well. So if you'd like to have a copy of that book, uh, please visit Amazon. I've got some that I've signed from last week and they're getting ready to be shipped. So if you haven't received it yet, I apologize uh, for that. Also, just to keep you up to speed on the uh, biohacking wellness TV, that's correct. If you have a, a Roku device, or I think it's now available on the Amazon Fire, on the Fire Stick, you can search biohacking wellness and uh, there's a whole TV channel. We have videos there uh, for you to watch on demand, uh, dealing with small animals, large animals, uh, athletics. Um, the office hours are there each week that you can watch the office hours uh, in your bed or in your dining room or den, wherever you have your television at home on the Roku device and the Fire TV uh, device as well. We're also gonna be adding Apple TV to the uh, playlist for biohacking wellness. So check that out. And a lot of good uh, programs there that you can watch in the comfort of your living room um, on TV. So we're excited about that and continue to expand that offering. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, something I've enjoyed putting together and working with. So let's see any questions, some new comments here. Let's have a look. Um, can you tell us about the Derby horse? Well, there are several horses uh, in the Derby this year that are utilizing MagnaWave and uh, have used MagnaWave as the trainers have used over the years. I need to get that list um, of the horses and the trainers and kind of go over that. But uh, one is with uh, Greg Foley. Uh, Greg, Greg was one of my first users of MagnaWave um, <clears throat> back in 2007 when we began with, with the device, one of his riders, outriders, who would exercise the horses in the morning and do therapy in the afternoon, uh, Mary Jo Robke, was one of my very first customers who utilized, purchased and utilized the, the MagnaWave device on the backside at Churchill Downs and uh, built her business around that uh, usage. She always told me, get me off this horse that I don't have to ride these horses in the morning. When you find something that, that can do that, I would love to do that. And I went to her and I said, hey, this is it. You can use this, treat these horses, and soon you won't have to ride anymore in the mornings and you can do your therapy all day long. And that's exactly what happened to her and many other folks uh, servicing the, the uh, we don't need that call. That's just a phone call from somewhere and uh, not a text. So we don't want that. But at any rate, let's see if we, oh, we do have some questions here. Let me come up here. Could you cover, uh, tell us about, that's the deal on the Derby. I will, um, gee whiz, it's, um, I need to pull this, I'll try to pull this up here in a minute, Maureen, and see which horses, which trainers uh, have been uh, MagnaWave users and go over that with you. Uh, Norma asks a question, can you cover treating cancer patients that take 
treat chemo treatments for three days off three weeks. Well, typically, uh, you always want to talk to your doctor and and let them know what's going on. This is uh, our devices are not a cure for cancer or anything like that. They provide the wellness. Uh, if someone's on chemo, you want the chemo to be stopped. So once they're completed with the chemo and you're treating for just general wellness and energy improvement, you can do that right up until I would wait maybe 24 hours after 24 to 36 hours after their last session and then begin to treat them for pain relief and relaxation and uh, it's, it's a way to do it always uh, clarify with the doctor and let them know the supplementation that you're applying to the body for comfort and uh, then you could treat right up until the next round of sessions is to begin and then again I would wait till it's completed for 36 hours and proceed with there with that type of uh, uh, protocol if you will or that type of action uh, with the device um, it's uh, it it my situation, when I had my prostate scare six years ago now, uh, had MRIs and C scans, C CT scans and ultrasounds, and, and it wasn't didn't look good at all. And all of my brothers uh, have had cancer surgery uh, for prostate issues and uh, at a younger age than me. And I've been able, I, th I feel, by using the machine over the years. But when I had my growth uh, and they were very concerned about it, I began using the machine from date of uh, notice and until they did the biopsy. Uh, which was about 10 weeks is how long that took for that to happen. I treated myself every day, sometimes twice a day with a semi machine. Uh, I did use the Max on occasion, but basically I had a semi at my at my home and I did it every day. And when it came time for the biopsy, it was dead and there was nothing there. And so that was a good thing. And uh, I've continued to treat myself over the years since that time. Uh, pretty much on a very regular basis, daily if I can, or at least two or three times a week, and uh, to just treat the area. I sit on the coil. Sometimes I sleep on the mat with the B2 machine and um, just continue to treat myself and everything works great. My last uh, checkup was about a month ago now and everything was clean. The doctor's very happy and everything looks good and feels good to the doctor as he, you know, they do that test. And um, so that's that's a good thing. So uh, basically as an inflammation reduction device, that's what this adds to help the body be healthier and the blood flow better and better oxygenation in the body. Uh, that cancer doesn't like good blood flow, doesn't like healthy blood cells, doesn't like oxygenation from the improved oxygenation. And so that's where some of the great comfort and relief comes for those people with that type of situation. Have you seen success in treating migraines with MagnaWave PEMF? For sure. People with uh, severe migraines have treated, they'll treat the back of their head, they'll treat with the coil over their shoulders, treating in this manner. We always go and treat the feet to get the reflexology aspect of the magnetic field penetrating and influencing the body with, with help and relaxation to better heal itself. And uh, now certainly how severe the the uh, migraines are what's causing them. You know, if, if uh, some people, it's a dietary issue. And so once you realize that and handle that, then it's not that much uh, of, of an issue. But uh, you can certainly, there's a call coming in. Somebody's at the door, the phone door. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, so it has been very effective for migraines. You can see that. Go to the MagnaWave uh, Research and Education uh, Facebook group, MagnaWave Education and Research, and you can search for migraines and people that have posted about migraines. And there's a lot of information there that you can learn from and you can actually search it on the on our group page or the Facebook page. Uh, MagnaWave Corporate, it's very difficult to search. And so you can't, don't really see what you're looking for. You can also go to the website in the uh, testimonial section uh, under the testimonial tab and you can search for migraines or headaches and uh, those testimonials will come up and you can have a look at those and see a good way to approach it and maybe uh, work for you. If you're a practitioner and you can go to the practitioner portal and ask those questions and you can ask the question also in the MagnaWave research group and we will see that it gets answered. So we'll help pull some of that information that you're looking for, put it in the research group and you can get your answers uh, in that fashion. But yes, we have had people that have had very good results and are very happy about utilizing MagnaWave PEMF for their migraines and headaches.
Uh, let's see who's calling today. Let's bring them up here. If I can, where's it at? Come on. Oh, here we go. Got a couple of them actually. Oh, and that's the missed call. We don't want that. But here's the message. Let's open it up. Uh, Michelle here. Is there info on MagnaWave that dives deeper into PEMF therapy results based on strength of the pulsed field, type of wavelength used, and frequency of the signal? Well, let's come up here and visit with Michelle. Aloha. Aloha. Michelle, you reached my voice oh, now. Not there. Leave me a message. And I'll call you. Well, I tried to call Michelle. So let me answer the question. Uh, is there uh, research or MagnaWave that delves into PMF therapy based on the strength of the pulsed field? We have done four uh, studies in Cuba. Uh, utilizing the stronger field devices, util utilizing the MAX device um, on uh, lumbar pain, knee pain, uh, prostate inflammation, and depression that we've dealt with in, uh, in these particular studies that we have available. They are on the website and you can see what is there. And, and typically a lot of studies that have been done over the years because of the proliferation of low power devices, many, many studies were done with low power devices what that ha what ha that have shown that the PEMF therapy is beneficial uh, in many many different instances and in different way it's been used to in the studies and you can see that you can go to PubMed and search that you can go to um, the AOPP go to the AOPP site pemfprofessionals.com and uh, is that is that what the link is put the link in there um, Chris, so they can go there if they'd like to, the Association of PEMF Professionals, and have a look there. And you can search there, and you'll see the results uh, on, on the use of PEMF. But to better answer the question, what the high-powered devices have done is they provide a more rapid result. And, and they go deeper, certainly. So in, if you got to be on a mat for an hour a day for eight weeks to get the results you're looking for, you can use a high power device like the MagnaWave PEMF Max or many of our different devices. And you can treat yourself for eight to 10 minutes, 15 minutes if you like, and you can see results in many cases immediately, depending on what you're, what you're talking with. If you're talking about pain, inflammation, temporary relief of pain, you can see those things. So that's what the high power uh, signals have done, uh, what, what they brought to the forefront of faster reaction. Now, the question also started dealing with wavelength. And it's been established for years that the wave, any wavelength is beneficial, whether it's a sine wave that continues or a square wave or a blunter, a more of a blunt wave. Uh, they all work. Now, some it's been found, Dr. Dennis found when he did the NASA study that the wave that gave him the best result and worked well for him was a, a basically a sawtooth wave, but a wave that would shoot up to a point and then drop off very quickly. They discovered that the real healing properties were in the slew rate, how rapidly it dropped off. And so that's where the, the type of signal, a signal that starts and stops. And so they found that that is one of the most effective effective uh, for healing when you're dealing with PEMF. But with that said, they all work. And, and so if, if someone tells you, uh oh, you have to use a square wave, that's the only way to go. Not necessarily the case. Or you have to use, I'm just telling you what Dr. Dennis found in his study and how it proved out for him and played out for him and uh, uh, in that particular study. Let me see what else she said. Pulse field type of wavelength used and frequency of the signal. Another very good question, the frequency. When we're dealing with our devices, the MagnaWave devices, the frequency is not a radio frequency. You don't dial it in like 32.5 or whatever. The frequency is how often the device delivers, how many clicks per second, how often the signal is delivered. So if you want a frequency of 10, you want to count the signals so it counts 10 signals every second would be a frequency of 10 or a Hertz of 10. Hertz is also how many clicks 
per second. And so our devices can go down to basically uh, maybe two hertz or one hertz in some cases to where it's one click per second or in the range of about 50 clicks per second, which would be 50 hertz. They operate in the 50 or 60 hertz level, depending on the power source that you're utilizing. And so they'll deliver in that fashion. So the uh, again, the the frequency is not necessarily the key. It how much energy you want. If you want more energy, then you want more of a mid-range frequency delivery in terms of something that you you maybe can't quite count the clicks, but you can almost count the clicks. Would be kind of moderate, and and so there you have you're putting more energy into the body more quickly because you're doing more clicks per second. Now if you turn it way up, you're delivering you're delivering one click or two clicks per second maybe and and it's much stronger as it goes in in some cases on the joints and er areas of the body the foot of a horse or the foot of a person you can turn it that high and they can take it comfortably but if you put that on your low back you may not be able to do it because it's just too much energy at one time it may not be uh, comfortable for you in that type of usage so again, the 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 the, the it, it, there there are ways to determine uh, if if you want to do it. You, actually, what I tell people, let me be clear on this. What I used to tell people when they would purchase their machines or they'd want want to rent a machine, I would tell them put it on a moderate setting, one two three four two two three four three two three four, and use it at that, and and learn to use it. Do it. You're treating. You may not be treating optimally at that point, but you need to learn. You need to watch the horse and you'll learn over time. It's going to, I always said it would take 50 horses. When you've treated 50 horses, the bell's going to go off in your head and you're going to say, oh, I understand. I can treat it higher over here, lower over here. I'm seeing movement on the hip here that I'm not seeing over here. So that's my spot that I'm working on. And so you'll learn that. You can learn the read of the horse. The horse will tell you every horse is different. Every animal is different, small animals and big animals. So just put it on and treat. You're learning, you're watching, and you are performing the services that you want. You are helping the blood flow. You are making things better for the animal that, that you're treating so that hopefully they can heal more rapidly and have a good steady healing process. And so that's that's the thing. And so it, it, it's not a radio frequency. The, the strength simply provides a faster result if you want to use a low power machine and lay on the mat or put you know, whatever, sit on the mat for an hour a day, every day, you're going to get some results, but you're not going to get them as fast as you do with a higher power machine. The signal doesn't change. The All the strength does is gives you a different penetration and it gives you an energy level that the body can react more rapidly. That's the difference. They're all good but it's just how much time you have and how you want to approach it. So I hope that answers the questions that Michelle had um, as, as we go into the depth of the MagnaWave and uh, how it works. Okay, uh, let's see. Migraines, here's a question. I'm curious about the best way to answer the following. If, peep te peep, if PEMF technology has been around for so long, why haven't I heard about it? My best guess is because the technology hasn't always been affordable and available. Is that a good answer? Well, that's a, that's a fine answer uh, to say that. However, the the issue really is um, what happened, and it's the same thing. You hear about acupuncture, but a lot of people haven't experienced acupuncture. Certainly more people are aware of massage, but what happened was the AMA removed electromedicine uh, or electro, uh, well, at the time, electromedicine, acupuncture, massage, out of the practice of mainline medicine in the United States. And, and so it was just put on the back burner. And so it wasn't used. Let's just put it that way. Over the years, it has been used. And you go to Germany and Europe and other countries around the world, PEMF therapy or PEMF usage of PEMF is mainline. They, they use it. They understand it. They've done it for years and years. That's why the, the first devices that came to America came from Greece and Germany. And a lot of different devices are over there that, that are not here. And so it was not a recognized uh, therapy in the United States. So that's why someone hasn't heard about it. Uh, 
Uh, but believe me, today it is so much more mainline or so much more recognized than it was uh, 20 years ago or 25 years ago. Um, and, and again, when I started, there were not three or four machines east of the Mississippi River in the area that I was dealing with. There were machines coming uh, that were being used by chiropractors and so on and so forth, but there just weren't a lot of them. Uh, they were more in California, other hotbeds of the country. Today, there's thousands of machines east of the Mississippi River, all, actually all over the United States. But I remember so clearly dragging this machine around and people thought I was nuts. You know, what's he doing? The crazy guy pulling that box around saying he's going to help these horses. And uh, but when they saw it and they got on the horse after a mere 20 minute to 30 minute treatment and the horse was better, the horse performed uh, the way they wanted it to and uh, had better range of motion and less pain, uh, it started It started going. So, you know, the question is, if it's, if it's been around for so long, why haven't I heard about it? That's the reason. It's just not been utilized in mainline medicine. Uh, for example, today, there are several devices that are FDA cleared, FDA approved for human use, non-union fractures, depression, autism, excuse me, uh, brain tumors, many different uses that are approved devices uh, and and that, that are PMF devices. So all you got to do is, is mention that and people, oh, okay, so it is accepted, yes, but it's, it's very specialized the way it's been used or it's used in a specialized manner for bone fractures, for autism, for uh, TMJ, for all these types of situations. The glioblastoma brain tumors uses a device called the Optune device and, uh, and, and it doesn't cure the cancer, but it certainly makes their life more comfortable. It makes the, it, they, we're told that it slows down the development of the tumor and uh, so it, it, it elongates, gives someone a better quality of life for a longer period of time dealing with those types of, of indications. And so the answer is there, it's growing, it's coming. Uh, many different companies have not worked to be uh, FDA cleared, Health Canada cleared, for example. Now our, our digital devices are now cleared, our Health Canada approved. And uh, we're waiting and we're in the final stage of John's with us today in Europe of having the CE mark uh, on the devices and uh, on our digital devices. Uh, we have applied for 510K uh, for specific reasons uh, to use the devices uh, with FDA clearance. We, we're working hard to do that. And so that will make a difference when our devices uh, are actually um, registered and cleared by the FDA and the, uh, the, the PMF solutions devices are in the same process of, of getting FDA registration and then to move on to 510K approvals in, with those devices as well. So it's just simply a matter of usage. It wasn't used for years. Yes, it was expensive to get higher power devices. And that's probably another thing. When I was selling originally, I just got someone at the door. I'm gonna go check out the door in a second. But when I first started, uh, in the in the PMF world, uh, I was doing low power PMF. It was very comforting. We'd put it on a horse, and the horse would relax. And uh, but to get any reversal or to get in depth, uh, speedy, uh, sped up healing, uh, it was slow. And but when we came along with the MagnaWave, and we had high power devices that we could treat in 20 minutes and see a change, and we could watch open wounds heal more rapidly, and watch uh, uh, abscesses relieved and, and blow much more rapidly. That's when you started seeing a change and that's where the, the trainers were really started getting behind it. I can't tell you how often I would sell a low power machine, a blanket or something, go into the barn six months later and it's in the tack room covered with dust because they didn't have time to use it on every horse every day. It's a different game now with these high power machines. They can treat these animals every day if they need to, or they can treat them when they have a an acute uh, situation and they can get after it and reverse it pretty quickly. And so that's what makes a difference. The fact that in the in the past, they were all low power. You couldn't feel them. It took a long time for them to do their job. They were relaxing and, and they were doing their job, but it was just slow. Speed is the deal. Back in, in the 2007, the other side, that the other foot that dropped, if you will, was lasers. Lasers up until that time, 
were most of them that you saw were class three cold lasers. Uh, they worked, but they were, sl again, slower, time consuming to utilize. You had to use them a lot. Bingo, along comes the class four laser that you start seeing results immediately. And the veterinarian started saying, wow, this is really cool. I need to, to have this in my practice and it fit. And so that's how things blossomed at that time. So we were both moving down the street at about the same time, the higher powered lasers. Now we have the high power LZR light that, that's available that uh, is as effective as a laser, but it's simply light and red light, white light, and uh, very beneficial to the uh, healing process and, and uh, helping the aid the healing process in these animals and and so forth so th that's what that's what did it the, the speed that that came with the device also uh improves the uh the awareness of the devices so that's where you need to go with your answer practice that learn that that you can talk about yes it's in it's in other countries yes it's going on and explain the whole thing give them a story how you got involved then let them understand that yes it's been around a long time but now it's more powerful works more rapidly that's why you're hearing about it and that's why you want to explain it to them and help them so uh, work on that and uh, develop a good story that you can tell and uh, that they believe if you've got a look in your eye that uh, I don't think that he or she is sold on what they're telling me, that's what they're going to think. But if you can speak with authority, uh, speaking with authority means you speak as though you believe and you know what you're what you're saying, and then people will believe that. And uh, certainly uh, you can have them watch this program. You can have them call me or call the office. And uh, the person quite often on the other end of the phone is always an expert, whether they are or not. They can, the people will believe uh, what they're saying. So I hope that helps with that uh, way to answer that particular question. Elaine has marketing classes that she's working on. I think she's about two thirds finished with her first one and then she'll have a second round but those are the kind of things in the marketing class that you learn not only how to use the social media and your email to build your list but what to say how to say it when to say it in order to have that authority to be that uh, uh, authority in your area of the country wherever you may be okay let's see here um, where'd it go uh, I'm getting on okay that's too high I'm looking for um, oh, here's Sandra. Okay. My horse got kicked and fractured her skull, had her crates. Uh, she has had two bumps between her eyes, have been treating, but the bumps haven't gone down too much. This happened in February. Am I missing something or is she just doomed to look like a unicorn? Well, <clears throat> if the bumps are inflammation of tissue and depending how long they've been there, if the bumps if from the kick... Uh, are basically scar tissue that has developed on on her head, then getting rid of the scar tissue is very difficult. Making it more pliable is not so difficult. If the bumps came from bruising of the skull, of the bone, then again, you may not get rid of those bumps. And, uh, and so it, it depends what they are. If they are inflammation that is there and has remained because of how they, the stress that they have and, and what they do and how it goes, then you can maybe relieve that over time. But if it's a scar tissue type of bump, it's going to be tough to relieve. You can soften it, which may uh, change the texture or the look of it. So that that's possible. Uh, your vet can probably tell you uh, what the bump is or what's caused it. You ought to be able to feel if you can feel it and tell, oh my gosh, that's like bone. Uh, that's part of the healing process. And, and sometimes you'll get that when bones heal, you'll get you know, that, that buildup of calcium and the buildup of bone, and it leaves what could be a hump or a bump or a, a bend or whatever. And so that could be the issue. So I, I would ask your vet uh, as to what it is or what you feel it is. But my question would be just in this connotation today, uh, do, do you feel that they're softening? Does it when you are they pliable when you touch them and they weren't pliable in the past? Scar tissue could be developing. If it's been there since February, and here we are seven months later and, and um, almost nine months later, uh, they took that long to stay and be there. Um, there there's an issue and it could be a challenge to, to rid the, get rid of the bumps. 
Um, great question. I hope that's uh, satisfactory in helping you. Um, Ruth says she's looking at different systems. What is the difference between your system and the Swiss Bionics? I've been told that the higher frequency machines are dangerous. Well, that that's a very good question. And and but to talk about frequency levels. Um, when you, if you're talking about high voltage, high frequency machine or frequency machines like we have, uh, actually the the terminology would be the low frequency. I don't want to say it's not dangerous, but you're going to feel the low frequency more on our devices than you feel the high frequency. When it's operating at a high frequency, it's very low, and you don't feel you feel it, but you don't feel it as much. Uh, the primary difference between our devices and the Swiss Bionics devices are the Gauss delivery and, and the power of the devices. Um, I forget the brand name of the Swiss Bionics uh, machine, but they are typically low voltage, low frequency devices, meaning they're operating in a Gauss level, many of them of 35 to 50 Gauss at their top most powerful setting. Uh, and in those cases, they often talk about milligauss, uh, and so they want to make a big number, 140,000 of this. Well, it actually, it's 35 Gauss. And and so uh, when you when that's the primary difference between our systems. And I kind of covered that a few minutes ago as to what made the difference when I would go treat horses in the beginning or treat a dog in the beginning. After eight to ten minutes uh, on a dog, for example, uh, never forget with Dr. Marty. The first time we met in person, we were at a at a veterinary show, uh, and he was speaking uh, as with his experience and having gone to Cornell and so on and so forth for Vanderbilt University. We were in Boston the week after the Boston Marathon uh, tragedy. And so he's talking and we go out at break and there's a world champion dachshund that could not walk, it, dragging its back legs. One eight minute treatment, the dog stood up and walked away. And so that's the speed of result. There's no danger in treating with a with a high voltage machine or a low voltage machine. And and the high power, you, know, you people always say, can you can I can I made a huge mistake. First machine I ever got, I went to a, a young lady, um, um, Christina, and was going to show her the machine. She used my other equipment that I had over the years, and I put her in a chair. She had back problems, and I turned the machine on, but I had forgotten to turn the machine down. And it and it hit her with, with a thrust, if you will, or with a pretty strong signal, and, and she jumped up out of the chair. Well, so the point being, if it's too high, people will not tolerate it. They don't want too high. You could put it on her elbow and treat it all the way up. So that's the thing. Uh, they're not dangerous. They need to be used properly. And you always want, and I learned very quickly. And Christina never stopped reminding me <laughs> to turn the thing down when you're going to treat somebody for the first time and gradually turn it up so they had their, their comfort level. And so those kind of things for happen. But to, to, to take a look at it, it's the strength of the machine and the speed of the result that many people are looking for. And so that's the primary difference between the MagnaWave PEMF and the low power devices. Low power devices are fine, they're just slower. And so it depends what you want. If that works for you to put that in a chair and watch your TV for three or four hours in the evening and do that every night or at least several nights a week, you might get the result that you're looking for, or you probably will get some of the result that you're looking for over time. And uh, But if you want something quickly, and you want something that you can get after very quickly, then it's the higher power devices. And uh, I do it. I get out in the yard, and I get to doing something, or I go to the lake and work on the boat, and I'm up and down, in and out, and I come home, and my back's bothering me. I treat it immediately. Even to the point that I was talking with a gentleman last night who's treating uh, issues in, in his horses and he's got some low back issues and he said, what should I do? And I said, well, if you've got an activity that you do that your back sometimes becomes sore from, if you do that activity, treat your back. Don't wait for the pain. Treat your back, treat your knees, ankles, whatever it may be as a precaution to keep it from coming. And it's the same thing in your animals when you're treating your horses to when we first started. And I, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm repeating this thing. Many of you have probably heard. But when we first started, it was all pre-event. 
Please treat my horse so I can control it better. Treat my horse so he has a better range of motion. Treat my horse so it can jump higher. Treat my horse so I, it'll change leads for me and do all these things. And that's basically what we were seeing. And, and so that, that, was, that was the difference. And it was right now. And but we were pre-event. Then as the as people began getting machines or having machines or being around me or I was around them, we would treat post-event and the horses would recover more rapidly. They'd be read, better suited to go back to the ring next weekend. You know, a lot of times in horse racing, they'll put 14 days or so between races, whereas in equine competitions, you're competing every week. And you're at this show this week, this town next week. And so the recovery between Monday and Wednesday or Thursday when the com competition starts back up became critical. So we went from being a pre-event, help me go higher and faster and smoother to help me recover in a better fashion so I can go jump higher and faster and so forth next week. And, and so that's, we really bridged a gap there, pre-event to recovery. And, and so then what's the natural progression from there? If it helps with recovery, if you have an injury, it's going to help that injury to better heal and, and maybe more rapidly. And that's the things that we've seen is more rapid uh, addressing of the healing process when you approach that. So lower machines work slower, but they work, but they work slower. And so to answer your question, high frequency is not dangerous. There are people with low power machines that run very high frequencies. Uh, frequency, now Dr. Pollock talks about a frequency over a, a, a thousand. It can be uh, a problematic for breast implants. Uh, it could be just w w the speed of that, of that particular frequency. But there are many low power devices that operate at a very high frequency and they're not considered dangerous. And many of them are FDA registered or FDA cleared and or they're registered as as over the counter devices and they, de they deliver very high frequencies. So if it's if the frequency is the deal and not the power of the frequency, then, you know, there's a there's a question. So high frequencies uh, would not typically be an be an issue with how they're with how they are delivered and what goes on. I hope that helps. If you have a question, someone did let me hear. Oh, I forgot the doorbell rang a minute ago. Let me bring this up and go over here and see what we got. Um, here we're just ring it up. Let's see who we have. Wow, time is flying. Eight, 48 minutes already. Going to try to get all to the uh, questions. Hello? Hello, Pat Zemer here. Hi, I'm how, Leslie. How are you? Good. Good. You have a question. Um, yeah, I was wondering. I have the Semi Three, mm -hmm. and I have the MagnaWave app. And previously, for certain conditions on the app, it said to double the times if you have a Semi machine. Uh -huh. And then since the app updated, now. Um, I'm not seeing that under any of the conditions. So I was wondering, does that hold, still hold true? Well, it holds true from the standpoint that if you, let's say you've, you, you've got a hoof issue and, and the treatment time would be 15 minutes with a more higher powered machine. Could you do it for 30 minutes and, and uh, help your process along? Absolutely. Is it necessary? No. Uh, all the time, but you certainly have that freedom with a lower power device to run it longer uh, because it's not as strong as the, as the higher power device. And I need to check into that and, and uh, go, go through that uh, with Aaron and Teresa and, and have a look at that because in some cases that needs to be there. The challenge is some people think, oh, well, you have to do it longer. Because it's a semi three, you have to do it longer. That is not the case. You, 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 for example, if I was going to treat my prostate uh, or, or my back and I had a semi three uh, or a semi five, uh, my session time might still be 10 or 15 minutes and I'm happy. It worked fine. Could I have gone 20 minutes or if I had a bigger machine may have turned it up a little bit more to get a little faster result? Perhaps. So it, it just became a real challenge to to address it to where to where people felt like if you had a semi three, you had to do it twice as long. Again, not the case. If you're treating if you're treating an animal and you're using the large wave wings and you're getting movement in the shoulders and they're seeing they're good, a 10 minute, a five or 10 minute session on the front shoulders is wonderful. You don't have to do it for 20 minutes. 
Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so that holds two for like a whole body session. Sure. A horse. Sure. I mean, rarely would you ever take, for example, the Max machine and, and do a whole body treatment on the horse on high. The, the horse won't stand there. The horse will leave if it's uncomfortable with what you're doing. So they'll run the machine very low or moderately low, and they'll use the higher setting for doing the feet or doing the ankles or the knees. So there they're able to turn it higher and still use their same treatment time. That's where you may turn around yourself and say, you know what? Uh, it says 10 minutes and they're using a max machine. They might turn it higher. So I'm using a, a lower powered machine. So I'm going to do it longer. Okay. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a, common sense understanding type of thing. Okay. Okay, though. You. You're welcome. Uh, support at MagnaWave PMF. I'll send you a signed copy of the book. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Great question. Uh, let's see. Uh, different systems. Um, Sandra says they were x-rayed. Uh, I don't know what the result was. I'm getting a lot of questions about if insurance covers... PEMF. Obviously, I can't bill insurance, but if the doctor's office is using MagnaWave, are they able to bill insurance for services? That is one of the single biggest issues when these companies have FDA devices. Um, because what's happened when the AMA removed electromedicine and various areas from mainline medicine, acupuncture and massage, then all of a sudden they didn't charge for those services and they weren't, they weren't covered. Now there are some codes today that, that do cover uh, um, muscular movement and that's what we're doing. Uh, mechanical massage, that's what we're doing. So there are some areas, but the, but the, here we go. I don't know why that keeps coming in. Uh, but what happens is in, in those types uh, of situations is that once you become FDA approved, now you got to go back to the insurance companies and say, OK, we're FDA approved. Will you put this in your insurance package? That is a huge challenge. And in a lot of cases, the insurance companies don't want to put it in there because they don't want to pay for it. They, you know, they don't want to pay for anything more than they have to. That's their logic behind what, you know, pay for it, but we don't want to pay for any more than we have to. So that is the challenge that that devices face is getting the insurance companies to, in fact, agree to cover it, even though many devices can be or will be FDA approved. The fact that it's FDA approved does not make it magic. Now, if it's FDA approved and someone uses it as a frequency therapy because there is a frequency therapy code and they are a doctor, then that's their decision how they want to approach their billing and and, and go at it from that perspective. But so, you know, are, are people able to get it covered? I once had a very good friend who had knee surgery and I said, man, Paul, I got this machine that'll, that'll help you. And, uh, you know, it's six grand at the time of his low power device. And he went to his doctor and his doctor wrote a prescription. He got the device and his insurance company paid for it because the doctor wrote a prescription. And, and so those types of situations are there, but as a rule and today it is, it is not readily covered by insurance. There are chiropractic doctors in various states that are able to use it, as I said, as mechanical massage or mechanical stimulation that they can get uh, things covered in their particular, their particular state. But that is the uh, situation uh, as it's developing. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's what we are doing. Any other questions? Um, I have been educating about the FDA approvals, and that really does help people to take it into consideration. Okay, that was Kayla when she asked a question about how to talk to folks and how to answer their questions. Well, here we go. Uh, we're running low on time. If you have a question, please put it in the chat box, and I'd be happy to answer it. And we've had some very good questions today. And again, this will be up. I'll put it up on uh, uh, Biohacking Wellness TV this afternoon. And so it'll be available for viewing there, certainly available uh, for viewing uh, on YouTube and on our website. So many different places to be able to catch uh, the MagnaWave office hours and the other programs that we develop in uh, Elaine's uh, Women's Wellness uh, webinars. They're all there, going to be more of them there. So check out Biohacking Wellness TV on uh, Roku or Amazon Fire and uh, enjoy it. Let us know what you think. And we're always happy to help uh, help out in those types of situations. So let's see. I don't see any other questions coming up at this point. 
So uh, you're welcome. Those of you that said thank you uh, for the particular answers. Always remember, you can, if you have a question, you can call MagnaWave office, 833-MAGNAWAVE, uh, and uh, tell them you have a question, and they'll put you in touch with a sales professional, Not and you don't have to buy anything, or they'll put you in touch with Elaine or myself or Cameron uh, or, or someone to answer your questions, and uh, so you get the answers that you're looking for. You can send us an email. You can send me an email, or you can send an email to info at magnawavepemf.com uh, with your question, and we will certainly get it and answer it. Uh, you can ask questions um, of practitioners. If you're a practitioner, you can certainly put your questions or your clients' questions in the certified page, and we'll see it there. Aaron uh, is very good about answering the questions uh, that people are asking about treatments and how to do it, what to do, what to look forward to. So all that's available to you, and, and uh, it's always um you know, that that's really our goal is to be transparent, to answer your questions, to tell you what's what's there and to help you find uh, what's available. As you know, for example, the LZR ultra bright light that we're using for light therapy in conjunction as a complementary method to MagnaWave on the to that end on biohacking wellness. There is a whole uh, channel, if you will, on light therapy. And there are a few videos there with Dr. Turchin. Uh, talking about ma uh, light therapy in the conjunction of MagnaWave for sports injuries and then just the the light therapy in general for animals. And so those programs are there for your viewing and education uh, with Dr. Turchin on Biohacking Wellness TV. Don't forget today is the last day, five o'clock, if you want to enter to win the MagnaWave Soul Machine, a uh, $100 donation uh, puts you in the drawing and 100% of the proceeds raised are going to charity. It's just a way that we can try to give back and give somebody a machine and you can help out and and, uh, and maybe be the winner. So we're very excited about that as well. Five o'clock today uh, for that. And we hope you find that interesting and certainly appreciate your support of this endeavor to help out some nonprofit charities. Okay, I don't see any other questions uh, coming at this point. So we'll be about ready uh, to head out. Uh, I can't, I'd show you the, let's see if I can show you the fish. This is kind of neat. I'm using a new uh, camera, my, actually my telephone as my camera, and I can flip it around there and the fish are out there, but I, it's the sun shining. So you really can't see the fish um, moving around too much in the pond. We got six, six, seven fish in the pond. The average uh, length of the fish is about 18 to 20 inches. They've been there for over 50, now about 18 years, and uh, we certainly enjoy them and, and uh, enjoy the, the koi pond and thought I'd show them to you, but you can't see them. They're uh, sun shining too much. Okay, thank you for being with me. Wave on to better health and happiness in your life with MagnaWave, and we look forward to you joining us again next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye. I was able to ride more comfortable, confident, and strong. Well, I'm a firm believer in the Magna Wave. I've seen the remarkable response on horses, racing, and it's helped me get to the winner's circle.